Hello, everybody, and welcome to Talk More Talk, a solo Beatles video cast where we talk about all things from the solo years and, of course, from the Beatles years as well. Uh, we are so happy to be with you tonight, and uh, hopefully where you are, you are staying warm. Uh, as you can tell by my background here in Chicago, that is, yes, that is my backyard. Uh, we are, we are drowning in snow here so it's, uh, so it's, I, <laughs> it's still a winter wonderland over there huh it is a winter wonderland come so, on summer yes come on <laughs> summer come on so uh yeah hopefully the sunshine will be coming in soon uh so we uh we are uh really uh, happy to be with you tonight and we've got a fun, fun topic, uh, which is going to be, um, uh, we're putting together what we are calling four by four, which is sort of an ultimate solo album from the 70s comprised of deep album tracks. And we want you to play along with us. Uh, but we have rules that we we set for ourselves just to make it more interesting and we <laughs> will uh we will explain those uh closer to the time uh it's it's going to be i think a, a great great time by the way this is episode 60 if you can believe it or not 60 <laughs> i mean I, I just when i looked at the number i was couldn't believe it time really flies so before we get to everything um i let me introduce myself and my good friends and colleagues that i'm fortunate enough to uh, co-host the show with uh, every other monday my name is kid o'toole i am the author of songs we were singing guided tours to the beatles lesser known tracks thank you tom and uh, also michael jackson faq all that's left to know about the king of pop you've probably heard me on various podcasts i also write for a variety of sites on the internet you just you can't get away from me whether you like it or not <laughs> and <laughs> uh let's see uh starting next to me here he is the co-host of the very popular podcast and now video cast two legs which is a paul mccartney centric program uh in addition to his usual shows where he interviews uh, both of he and andy nichols interview different um paul mccartney authors uh, and experts people who've worked with him uh they also do a great series on a weekly series now on uh, youtube where they do rate the the tracks mm. uh, of different uh, paul mccartney albums which is a lot of fun you know i really you recommend you you uh, tune in and 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 join in the fun it's it's really great so please say hello to mr tom hanyati tom how are you doing kid i'm doing great thank you for the introduction and and it's good to see uh my other my other two buddies ken and, and ken and joe and uh great topic tonight I, I love me some good deep cuts and um i'm excited to uh talk about them tonight and uh and i'm glad i'm not where you are kids let's just say that <laughs> uh, shut up all right <laughs> It yeah. seems to never stop snowing where I am. So yeah, no oh, kidding. Well. Yeah, me too. Yep, no kidding. So all right, moving on. He is the host of the very popular YouTube channel, Mean Mr. Mayo. And as we always say, he is hardly mean. He's just he's a he's a teddy bear. We all know it. <laughs> we all love right, him. Tom, I'm a teddy bear. <laughs> uh, he, he, he wasn't a teddy bear earlier today. I can tell you that. We had, we had ourselves a pretty tense conversation about the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Damn, so, I have to hear about oh, this wow. after the show. So <laughs> uh, he is uh, so he's the host. And uh, he uh, in addition to his videos where he talks about his adventures in collecting um, and does some great comedy uh, bits as well he has really expanded his channel he has a new show uh that's on every week called fab gab which i i love that title mm -hmm. where uh he and other members of, of the vinyl community do rate the tracks on beatles albums which is uh which is a lot of fun and he also does frequent chats uh so mm -hmm. tune in and you just might get on camera <laughs> uh and so lucky you, you just... lucky you <laughs> <laughs> and so profile yeah. <laughs> so may I present Joe Mayo. Hello, Joe. How are hello, you doing? Hello, kid. Doing well. Thank you. Good to be here with you. Hello there, Tom. And hello, Ken. Hey, Joe. 
All right. <laughs> All right. And last but definitely not least, he is definitely, I think it's not an exaggeration to say, a, a fixture, a legend in the Beatles community. He is the longtime host of the syndicated radio show, Every Little Thing, where he plays just that. Uh, every Little Thing and Beatles and Solo uh, organized around really creative themes. I love the different themes mm. that, that uh, you come up with. He is also the co-host of the popular uh, podcast things we said today uh, and he if, if that weren't enough <laughs> <laughs> he now has a YouTube channel uh, mm. where he interviews um, authors musicians you name it uh, I was honored enough to be on uh, the channel he is one of the the great interviewers I always have great time being interviewed by him Mr. Ken Michaels hello Ken thank you kid Hey, hey, everybody, and uh, Tom and Joe, you're going to be on my YouTube channel, too, so uh, you have no great. choice in the matter. Get ready. <laughs> great. You're all stuck with me. Uh, oh, man. Stuck inside a cloud, huh? Very That's right. Your you mind go. is getting closer and closer to mine, and it's a freaky thing. <laughs> I was going to give a Bob Dylan response to that one, but you know, stuck inside, stuck inside a mobile. mobile. Uh, yeah. <laughs> with the Memphis, with the Ken I had to remember what show, what show I was on, you know. <laughs> right you now, go. I'm stuck in the middle with you. There you go. Oh, there you go. See? Oh. There you go. Oh, it's on tonight, folks. <laughs> <laughs> the pun. You didn't see. You didn't see started. Reservoir Dogs, did you, Tom? Oh, I, was, I love okay. Reservoir Dogs. <laughs> Stuck mm. in the middle with you from there. That's right. What a that, scene that, that what a scene that was. That that movie ruined that song for me for a while. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. You can never hear uh -huh. it again. Yeah. I'm glad I never saw it then. Yeah, oh. be glad. Be very glad. Uh, so, well, again, thank you all for joining us tonight. We're so glad uh, that you're with us. And before we get to our main topic, as always. Ken has all the news that's fit to print. So, Ken, what have you got for us? Okay. Well, first of all, it's getting more exciting. Concerning <laughs> the Plastic Ono uh, Band box set. First of all, a new video has been made for John's song Love from the album. And it premiered on YouTube on Valentine's Day. Aww. How appropriate. It features a collage of all that it takes and mixes of the recording taken from the box set along with transcriptions of quotes from John and Yoko throughout the song. Now, March 4th is the date when an official announcement is supposed to be made on, uh, on the Plastic Ono Band website. I have a feeling that's the date when you can pre-order the box set. Mm. But uh, on the official John Lennon Facebook page, they are saying, and I think I mentioned this in our last show, that there'll be 159 new mixes, stereo, 5.1 Dolby Atmos on two Blu-ray HD audio discs and on six CDs plus a 130-page hardback book. And bestclassicbands.com is reporting that the release for the box set will be April 16th. Oh, so right. that is a date that we have to shoot for now. It's not too far away, two months away. So, um, you know, if what I was saying before is accurate, thinking two months apart, then I would think All Things Must Pass would be in June and then the Get Back film and probably the box set for Let It Be late August. That makes the most sense. Also, as I'm sure Joe knows, I think Joe already did a video for this. Mm -hmm. Brand new Target exclusive is the uh, Give Me Some Truth on <laughs> vinyl. You don't have it right ha next to you? I had it there all day. Now I moved it. Oh, I was, oh no! I was I was thinking about going to pick it up, but then some guy had to go on live uh, YouTube for six hours, and, <laughs> <laughs> six and hours. I couldn't and I couldn't get away from the damn computer. But hmm. but it's in uh, opaque blue, so you had it, Joe, and you went with it. <laughs> I had it, and I went with it. <laughs> and, you know, if we have the money. Easy come. Easy go. That's right. <laughs> the lions and the honeymooners are flying tonight, folks. Right. <laughs> uh, more news here. A new book is coming out in August called Paul McCartney, The Stories Behind 50 Classic Songs, 1970 to 2020 by Mike Evans. It's an in-depth look behind 50 of Paul's <clears throat> classic songs after the Beatles. And the book includes session details, personnel lists, and chart data. Uh, from original inspiration 
to its final release for each song. Quotes from session musicians and studio personnel and guest stars Stevie Wonder, Elvis Costello, and Kanye West. They all bring every song to life, including related photographs in and out of the studio. And it's due out August the 5th. Also in August, another book is due out, which is called Like Some Forgotten Dream, What If the Beatles Hadn't Split Up by Daniel Rachel. This award-winning uh, music author takes a serious look at a playful question of pop history. What if the Beatles had made one more album? Rachel examines the missed opportunities and misunderstandings that led the Fab Four's demise. And from the ashes compiles a track list for an imagined final album. Some people think that our show tonight was what that was. Yeah. You know, but it's not the same thing. No, it's not. I even no. got that mixed up originally. Now I got it. <laughs> Based on years of research and strict uh, criteria, Rachel suggests a thrilling alternative ending to the Beatles legacy. The release date for this one is August 26th. And thanks to our good friend, John Bazzini, from the Beatles in print together and solo for his uh, information here. That's from his Facebook page right there. Um, I have a few uh, cover versions to talk about here. There's a brand new cover version of Silly Love Songs coming from one of my favorite musical duos, mm. Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. Oh, wow. And we know them best from being in the fifth dimension and also for their hits, especially in the seventies of uh, you don't have to be a star. And I don't really know too much more about it. I know it's on YouTube. They're not saying right. anything about a new album or anything. I yeah. checked their website. It's not on there, but you can check out the recording. It's mainly Billy that's doing it. And right. the two of them, the two of them still have phenomenal voices. I saw Billy, them a Billy years does ago. still sound pretty good there. And like you said, Billy is, does dominate the vocals on there and you do get Marilyn towards the end with the counter um, counter vocals, you know, like Linda would have done in, in the original. But, mm. um, you know, she still sounds pretty good too. But I mean, as a, as a cover, it, it, was, it was okay. Yeah, that's all right. Yeah. I'm yeah. happy to when anybody covers Beatles oh, and yeah. solo. Oh, sure. oh, I'm sure Paul is too. And, and, the, and the other and the other camps, you know, you know yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, former frontman for the Verve, Richard Ashcroft, mm -hmm. has just recorded a cover of John Lennon's "Bring On the Lucy Free to People." John's recording of the song appeared on his album "Mind Games," and Ashcroft recorded John's song partly at Abbey Road Studios and also at Red Tone Studios in East Palo Alto, California. If you watch the video for this, you will see Richard in front of the microphone at Abbey Road. Very cool. I'm very happy to see anybody cover the more obscure <laughs> songs like this, Bring On yeah. the Lucy. Yeah. Um, and thanks to our good friend, Dylan Seavey, yeah. who gave yep. me this information. And also one of our uh, viewers, James Bell, for this information. Guitar great Steve Lukather will have a new album coming out February 26th, that's this Friday, called I Found the Sun Again, which contains the one song he recorded with Ringo on drums called Run to Me uh, that had previously been released digitally. A CD and transparent double blue album will be available what? through Amazon and Bull Moose, as well as a digital version of the album. That means Tom, Joe. Get on that, guys. Yep. <laughs> Get on the right thing. <laughs> Do. <laughs> Very oh, good, Joe. God. We do have a few passings that we have to talk about here. Mm -hmm. First of all, the death of Mary Wilson, one of the members of the Supremes. In the 60s, they were the top-selling female group with 12 number one singles in wow. the U.S., they were certainly primary competition to the Beatles when it came to the singles charts. Really, the Beatles were number one, Supremes were number two. Yep. In 1964, they released an album called A Bit of Liverpool, which had the trio recording songs from British invasion artists, not just the Beatles, but the Beatles songs they covered were A Hard Day's Night, You Can't Do That, Can't Buy Me Love, and I Wanna Hold Your Hand. They also recorded A World Without Love, which uh, Paul wrote and gave to Peter and Gordon, yep. and even How Do You Do It, which the Beatles recorded, yet because they didn't want it to be released as a single, as their first single was given to Jerry and the Pacemakers. The uh, Supremes also performed eight days a week on TV shows Shindig and Hullabaloo. 
Mary was also a guest most recently at the Fest for Beatle fans, yes. where she looked great. Yeah. You know, she And um, I just saw a video of her that uh, was posted that she made a few days before she passed. She's talking about all of her plans for, for this year and, a, and an album coming out that was from the 70s that hadn't been released before. I mean, this was totally unexpected. Shocking. Yeah, sad. Uh, Mary Wilson died in her sleep on February the 8th at the age of 76. Of the three members of the best-known lineup of the Supremes, the only surviving member now is Diana Ross. Okay. Did you want to say anything about that, Kit? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I just, uh, I was absolutely stunned. And, you know, um, Mary Wilson, while she wasn't obviously, you know, I mean, Diana Ross, of course, was always the central focus of, mm. of the Supremes. You know, I, I saw a, a quote from Lamont Dozier, of course, of Holland Dozier Holland, who wrote, their you know most of their uh, the Supremes major hits and he talked about how Mary Wilson was really sort of the glue uh that that held the group together in terms of um you know she was just the hardest worker that that she she was the one in the studio that if they uh, were arguing you know if there was any argument over the the you know, the harmonies and all she would just say you know come on let's just do this uh -huh. you know she was like the practical one you know she would just say let's just get this done and uh and she also had a much um kind of a sexier voice she was kind of considered like kind of the sexy supreme mm. and uh, and she did sing lead on a few songs um on the supremes albums not a lot but when you hear her, she definitely did have a more sultry you know deeper voice uh, the mm. Diana Ross. And, uh, and so, you know, it's a shame that, you know, at times she was kind of overlooked. Right. Her contributions, but without her, without her, her harmonies, you know, don't know if that would have been the same group. So it's right. really very, very sad, sad loss. Yeah. Was there any division amongst the Supremes fans of people who preferred her over Diana or not that I'm aware of, um, you know, because unfortunately, and I shouldn't say unfortunately, I mean, Diana Ross, I mean, of course, she was extremely talented and, and all, but, mm. you know, she just became so dominant and, and such a central figure right. um, that I don't know. I mean, I, I just think, you know, the focus was on her so much that I, I don't know if there were like, you know, diehard Mary Wilson fans, diehard Florence Ballard, diehard, right. you know, I don't think, yeah. I don't know if there were like yeah. wars going on, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, but yeah, um, yeah, but it, it's, it's just amazing though, as you talked about how many number one hits they had, I mean, they were Motown for yeah. a long time. And to think that they didn't start out that way. I mean, it took them a while um, before they finally had, a hit. I mean, they were known as the no hit Supremes mm. until where did our love go? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's just amazing when you think about that. <laughs> I mean, that, I, I, I always call them for me that the female Beatles, big Supremes fan, mm -hmm. uh, endless hits seems really, really love the Supremes. Yep, absolutely. Yeah. And they were originally, uh, by the way, called the prime Mets. Right, they were considered, right. yeah, the, the, uh, sister group to the temptations then called the primes. So, um, yeah, really an iconic, so, iconic group. It's just so impressive. Their, their, their lineup of hits from 1964 on, it was like one number one after another, practically. Very similar to what the Beatles were doing. Yep. Reminded me of the Jackson 5, too, you know, from uh, I Want You Back, you right. know, the very beginning. One number one song after another, you know, it's. And they it's still amazing. stand on their own today. Yeah, I mean, they they still sound distinctive. They still are played. It's you know amazing. Right. Okay. So sad loss right there. We also mourn the loss of the Beatles' accountant, Harry Pinkster. Uh, he worked for them from 1962 to 1970, overseeing their tax affairs, setting up their companies, helping them to buy their homes, and even handling their grocery bills. Mm. Paul McCartney said <laughs> Harry was the only one who really knew what went on. It is said he helped to inspire George Harrison to write the song Tax Man, and he tried to persuade John Lennon not to pose nude on the album cover for Two Virgins with Yoko. He was also given the task of informing the Beatles in 1964 that they were officially millionaires. 
But he also had to tell them that their millions were in earnings, not assets, and that they needed to set aside some of those earnings for taxes. Harry was 90 years old. Wow. Wow. Also, condolences go out to Gary Burr after learning that his older brother, Rick, has died from COVID. And, uh, of course, we know Gary for all the work he's done with Ringo, being a member of the Roundheads with Mark Hudson, being on those albums, and the albums that followed after Mark Hudson. And, you know, I think most of the albums with Ringo has got a song that Gary has written with Ringo that he plays on. And so finally, it's just so great to be able to say this. <laughs> uh, Yoko Ono, happy birthday. 88 years old on February the 18th. Uh, Yoko posted this message online. She said, thank you for all your beautiful birthday messages. 88 years young. <laughs> Lots of love, Yoko. God bless right. her. It's a blessing, you know, when you, when you live that long and, you know, so I always say count your blessings and we're just so happy she's still here and still working. Still, she's always working on something, yep. <laughs> you know, she's always involved with Lenin projects in some way. And I, we all know that she's passing a lot of that over to Sean too, but still very active for her age. God absolutely. bless her. Absolutely. Okay. So now on to our main topic yes the show. <laughs> absolutely before we get to that i just want to mention uh in the comments timothy allen left a comment saying it only took me a year to catch you guys live so <laughs> welcome <laughs> yeah <laughs> tim welcome aboard my friend well, hi tim welcome. how you doing absolutely and uh and uh my friend tom green uh, from dubuque hey. iowa so hey tom said that we saw uh, Billy and, and uh, Davis and Marilyn McCoo in Dubuque in 2016, and they were wow. great. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Always, uh, cool. always are. They're they're definitely legends. So, all I right. I was just, amazed. Just wanted mm -hmm. to say a couple of years ago when I saw them how mm -hmm. powerful their vocals were. I'm always concerned about that, especially as people get older. But mm -hmm. man, they blew the crowd away. They really yeah. did. You know, certain mm -hmm. songs like "One Less Bell to Answer." Marilyn McCoo was like, oh so on top of her game you yeah know? she's an amazing vocalist she really really they, is they didn't she are. didn't she host one of the uh like the from the 80s a like a solid gold solid, solid gold, gold. Was it that was yeah. it what it was yeah. okay solid yeah. gold. sure yeah. i remember that yeah. absolutely yeah. Huh? absolutely and uh and a, one more shout out here because uh he asked me to tony DeMeo said to give him a shout out because he's really excited about this topic tonight so see tony <laughs> i said i'd do it and i'm doing it <laughs> <laughs> tony's been a loyal fan for a long time yes so he really, has really appreciate you being here with us tony you bet. Thank you Absolutely. for all of the course, comments. Not as, not as, no. Sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> not not as easy as, as you think doing this also, though, Tony, right? Very difficult. Yes, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yes, indeed. So, we are getting to our main topic. And as I said, we want you guys to play along but there are rules. So, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so uh, just briefly, uh, as I mentioned, we are calling this four by four, which is uh, we challenge each other to put together kind of a compilation album. This is not a Beatles reunion album or anything like that. Mm. That's kind of a different, you know, different thing. We wanted to put together an album with four per, per Beatle, uh, four album tracks for Beals, but deep tracks and uh and from the 70s but as i said there were rules so ken would you mm. like to lay out the rules for everybody yes i want to complicate things for everyone <laughs> yeah because you know, we're not going to make this yeah. easy <laughs> and you did, so you did and you did <laughs> actually uh one of my facebook friends came up with an idea which is similar to this and he he wanted to put together a mccartney album of the 70s and just pick one song from each album but they couldn't be singles so I thought, hey, why not do that with all four Beatles? So the idea was you pick four songs from each solo Beatle, but they have to be album cuts, okay? They can't be A-sides to singles. They can't be standalone singles, like Another Day or yeah. Don't Come Easy. It can't be B-sides, non-LP B-sides. They have to be songs that were on the actual albums. 
and they have to be studio albums. So you have to eliminate Wings Over America and the concert for Bangladesh. Okay, so um, I guess, I'm not sure if we're gonna do this, we're gonna say four from each Beatle or like four John, four Paul, are we gonna do it that way? Or yeah, we I thought we'd as... do four John, four Paul. Okay. Yeah, probably that'd be the easiest yeah. to do it. So it, uh, it may oh, not and... be easy. It may not be easy to think sequence wise how everything's gonna work on the album. Right. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. And we should it's discuss, discuss, discuss that before Beatle. because I, I just have four, four, four. four. Yeah, yeah. That's but, what um, I did. I don't know, I'll tell you all right now. I don't know about the my other three here co-hosts co -hosts here, but my album will not sell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't very the well. I don't think. Fan. Right, right. I, they, I'm sure I'll they, buy it. Uh, me too. Uh, I don't too. know. In the seventies, I mean, they were they were selling pretty good there up until when Ringo, you know, in seventy six for Ringo. But yeah, but uh, we're looking we're looking at this too as if it was just like a, some compilation now putting together, right? It's not yeah. like the it's not the Beatles if they made one more album right. together right. as a group. Exactly. This right. is not, not like is. a like a hypothetical reunion right. album or yeah. something yeah. like that. So uh oh and before we start, I just wanted to say um Michael uh Moises says big shout out from Australia. So hey. Uh, hey. Wow. Well, what so time is it there right now? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, exactly. Wow. Yeah. So, so thank you. Thank so you. Uh, and yes, Matthew Smith said no, they early. have to be yeah, Matthew Smith said they have to be from the seven. 70s, there goes my Ringo list. If so, <laughs> sorry, it has to be for all 70s. 70s. Yep, 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 absolutely. So, so those are the rules, everybody. So, uh, as I said, we want you to play along. So, uh, so yeah, let's let's go beetle by beetle. That's probably uh, the easiest way to do it. Uh, let's let's start with John, just just for the fun of it. So, we're going to each reveal the four tracks we picked. As always, we have no idea what everybody picked. Like we are springing these on, right, on everybody right. spur of the moment. So One you're 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 going to get our, our shocked faces <laughs> live. One more thing I, I forgot to mention. Oh sure. Mm -hmm. Um you can't pick singles that were released as singles in the US or the UK. Right. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I can't expect everybody to know all the singles around the world. That gets right. way, way too complicated that way. Right. But for yep. people that, you know, follow discographies, usually know the U.S. and sometimes right. some people might know U.K. singles as well. Right. So yep. the the Italian single of Mrs. Vanderbilt and Bluebird will not count. <laughs> yes. <No>. Right. <laughs> OK. <laughs> I, pr I predict we're going to have a lot of similar ones, but you never know. You might surprise you each other. Yeah, mm. You never, never know. know. OK, so Some we're going to start. With, so we're going to. Oh, uh, uh, Michael Moses says 1.30 p.m. In, in Australia, by the way. Oh, oh excellent. Okay. Okay. OK, so you're not up late. Good. Tomorrow, good, good, good. though. Tomorrow. Though. Tomorrow. Yeah. Tomorrow. <laughs> yep. That might be a. a, a so in a way, he is up late, but you know. Yep, but <laughs> yeah, but kind of. Uh, yeah. So anyway, but yeah, thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate it. All right, so let's get to John, and and as always, you know, let us know your picks out there as well. All right, so uh, Joe, let's let's start with you. What uh, what are your John picks? Okay, in no particular order or anything. Um, first one, New York City. Mm -hmm off uh, sometime in new york city um love that song my favorite song on the album probably uh great rocker you know and john's ode to the city that he loved uh, new york and um i just love it i love the energy john i don't think has too many rockers really you know in his solo career like you have some you have meat city and such um what you got maybe but i really love new york city and um i also enjoy it the two we get two solos we get a guitar solo and a piano solo later and uh I, every time i listen to it in the car i kind of pull a john candy kind of thing in uh what is that movie uh with planes trains and automobiles he's like yeah. he's like yeah. playing the piano with the piano so anyway i love that song that's my first one um secondly i picked uh the song that i always have a trouble saying from the mind games album I sue Masen, wow. which is uh, the song, which means I'm sorry in Japanese. It's a kind of an apology plea to Yoko. Uh, always love that song. It is so deep. It's, it's the kind of song that maybe not everybody would gravitate toward right away. But if you play it a few times, uh, 
John pours out his, his heart in there. And I love the Dave Spinoza uh, guitar playing in there. Uh, the lead, it, it's an amazing, amazing bit of, bit of music. At, at, very Kind of haunting at the same time, the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But I've always loved that track. And that's one for me. Um, next one from the Imagine album. I went with Oh My Love. Co-written by Yoko. By the way, she got right. writing credit on that. And uh, help, some help from George. Also, George Harrison playing along. Mm -hmm. Just a beautiful song, you know. I mean, when people again, you know, say, "Oh, you know," after the Beatles, they're not really interested. This is, if you like the Beatles, this is as, as good as a Beatles song, and it, I think, it dates back a ways too. Mm -hmm. So that's my third pick. And finally, I'm going to go with a song that I really love off Walls and Bridges, and that song is "Steel and Glass." Uh, as John called, son of How Do You Sleep. Uh, <laughs> it, it's another put-down song about who we don't know. Maybe Alan Klein, you know. John copped out a little bit, I think, on the old Grey Whistle Test interview from 75. Said, oh, it's, it's about me. and I'm really attacking myself on all these songs, you know. He, he kind of like taking his own personal, uh, dis, you know, anger at himself out. Uh, but I love it. Love the horns. You know, I love the horns, even though I enjoyed the Give Me Some Truth <laughs> compilation. Still have a, a little bit of a thorn in my side about that, that, that the horns were kind of eliminated for that version. Otherwise, fantastic compilation, by the way. Pick it up other than yep. that. But Steel and Glass, just always a favorite. favorite. Kind of like how Dylan's song, Positively Fourth Street, is like a real classic put-down kind of song. That's what I yeah. like about Steel and Glass. And there you have it. Hey. Yeah. Got a you know, lot of yeah. nerve. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, uh, back in the 80s, when I was doing my radio show on WDHA in New Jersey, David Spinoza, I had on as a guest. Oh, excellent. Oh, and, did you? Um, yeah. yeah. In fact, I really want to get in touch with him again. But yeah. we talked about I Assume Ascend, and that was a first take. Wow. The first oh, take you yeah. did on that lead guitar solo. So oh, I love it. It's, it adds so much to the song. It's so perfect. I wouldn't yeah. change a, a note on that, you know. It gives you chills. I mean, yeah. I can hear it now in my mind. I love it. Mm. Wow. It's yep. very good. good All picks. good. Good, good picks. picks. John right. was the easiest one, I think. Yep. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Yep. Yeah, that that was. That was a little easier. That's that's true. So all right, Tom, you got a hard act to follow. Oh well, <laughs> oh, I don't know here. Let's see. I, I went with um more of the lighter. Um, I'm really, really more appreciating John's more mellow vocals, uh, you know, on the ballads, uh, if you will. Um, one I picked, uh, first one I picked is Look At Me. Um, you know, I just love that song. Always have loved that song. Um, again, and, you know, Joe had this one and uh, Oh My Love is, as you, you are absolutely right, I think this is any just as good as any Beatles song um, in their catalog. And uh, wow, just you know, everything about the song w between George and, and, and John's vocals and everything about this song is perfect in my, in my, my opinion. Um, and then, you know, sticking with the, the ballad theme uh, from Mind Games, Out the Blue, I will pick that for mm -hmm. any list that uh, I have with, with Lennon. Um, again, you know, I've, I've said that, it's, I always say that it's, it was my wife's, mine and my wife's first dance at our wedding, and uh, it's just uh, a great song, a great story song, and uh, it's, you know, musically, I, I, I really, I really love it too. And the one that's really picked up steam for me uh, throughout the years, especially when we were talking about um, uh, Mind Games not too long ago, uh, the track I Know, I Know. Mm. And um, that, I mean, that one is just really um, picked up in listenings for me. And just the, for the music alone, I think it's just great. So, you know, you got a little bit of that country feel to it. Um, you know, the guitar work in there is excellent. And I think, you know, John's vocals, again, you know, are really good. So, uh, you know, I think a lot of people, you know, love Lennon's harder rock vocals. And I think, you know, we need to pay attention to, to his more, of his, more of his softer side. And, you know, I think people do, but um, I think we should really, you know, give those songs, you know, a little bit more of a serious look and listen. Agreed. 
Absolutely, yeah. I was I was almost going to pick I know I know, but at the last minute I thought I know I know somebody's going to pick that one. So uh, <laughs> and you were yeah, right. You were right. But yeah. I, not just because it could it easily could have been on mine as well. It was a yeah. very good pick, and I love look at me also. You mentioned yeah. that I, mm-hmm. I always love to you know a, kind of a, a overlooked song from that album I think at times yeah, I, I, I so. like it right. a lot. Absolutely. Mm. All right, Ken. How about you? What are your picks? Well, first of all, I just want to say I'm glad to see that Out the Blue and I Know I Know was included Mm. on the Give Me Some Truth compilation. Right. And over the years, certainly without the blue, I think more people are recognizing that song. Mm -hmm. It's really, um, you know, risen in the in the Lennon catalog. And I'm happy to 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 see that, um, you know, being assessed that way. But in a way, you know, it's a sad thing that John's, you know, catalog was the easiest it's only because it was the smallest to pick from right Mm. but it's also difficult because his catalog is just so solid song for Mm. song i love all of them for different reasons and you know i could just as easily put out the blue as is in uh in my uh four songs here or i know i know but i decided to go first of all with god Mm. yeah and i thought you know um (laughs) how would it be if this compilation started right with that song with him saying i don't believe in beatles and it's a statement and here are the beatles in the 70s putting out all this fine material on their own it would be like you know a statement in Mm -hmm. and of itself and um it's such a powerful song and the message of what john's saying and of course ringo's drumming is amazing on on that particular song i also put and I'm, i'm glad to see probably of all the ballads that john did in the 70s that weren't singles this one as an album cut is the one that people gravitate towards the most and that's jealous guy i think jealous guy is a classic everything Mm. about it the whole arrangement the whistling you know everything about it is just so wonderful and the the piano playing on it is just top notch the whole arrangement you know it's Mm. it's as perfect a recording as you can get I also put New York City in there because I wanted there to be some rocker and that's such a standout rocker overall one listen and you should be hooked to to New York City. Mm. Um, And I also thought give some attention to nobody loves you when you're down and out. Mm. I think that's one of the great album closers, although Yaya was after that, but I don't know if you want to count that, but um, it's such an intense song from John the message in it and the whole arrangement with the horns and everything. And, and I know that he said that, you know, he was, he wanted to write a song that Sinatra might do. And maybe, <laughs> maybe in the back of his mind, I can hear Frank Sinatra singing a song like that and then walking out in the distance, you know, while the whistling is going on at the very yeah. end. Oh yeah. Um, you know, if he's on stage, it could be a, a great closing number. And, um, it's a very sad song, a very, you know, bitter song. But, um, you know, that's one of the many sides of John. Nice. You know, and uh, yeah. those are the four I picked. Yeah, nice. Jealous Yeah, jealous Guy was, was in consideration for, for my list as well. Hmm. Uh, I remember first time hearing it while I was uh, at the, no, I, I think the, the Imagine John Lennon movie was the first time I heard that, was mm. heard the song, you know, and that was like my introduction to the solo Lennon. So I remember going out and, and on, you know, buying Shaved Fish right after that. And then oh, yeah. you know, I got I got the soundtrack to this uh, yeah. that Christmas and Jealous Guy was on it. And it was just like constantly played, you know, in, in, in my basement. <laughs> yep. Yep. That's one of the great things about a soundtrack like that is yeah. that you get not just the hits, but right. those album cuts well, that make yes. it far more interesting. Yep. And uh, what was unusual about the Imagine John Lennon soundtrack is that it also included sad song. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> no, I was just monitoring the show. I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> yep, I am right. too. <laughs> so, oh. kid. Yeah. All right. Well, um, these are, are all great choices. Let's... Uh, hard to follow up but i'm gonna try um so i tried kind of like what what you guys were doing i tried to balance it between like the rocking john the romantic and the reflective you know i i tried to balance all that out so um i chose um isolation 
uh, mm. from Plastic Ono Band. Mm. That's one of those, nope. you know, kind of like what, what you were saying, Tom, you know, your reaction to like Jealous Guy. The first time I heard Isolation, I think it was in the 80s. It was um, it was a radio special, uh, I think, about about John. And it was hosted by by Elliot Mintz. I don't think it was the, the Los Lennon tapes. I, it was something else. I think it was like a birthday tribute or something and julian lennon was was on it he was Mm. you know had just like a little segment and he introduced this as one of his favorite um of john songs great yeah i i i just i have a kind of memory of this and i remember hearing it and it was one of those like stop in your tracks kind of Mm. moments that i mean i just couldn't believe the Mm. honesty of this song i and and i just uh that was it i mean i i that may have been the moment that i i became like a a real john fan um after this so this the song means a lot uh to me and it's just i think one of his finest um then uh give me some truth because you know you have to have one of his political kind of songs Mm. and uh and i just think this is age even though you know benjamin's richard nixon i still think uh it has aged remarkably well uh, you know, I mean, it, it's uh, it applies to many administrations and, and many situations. Uh, and I love I just love his delivery. Uh, right. mm. I mean, it's just one of his best vocals. Um, and then the last uh, couple um, Walls and Bridges, I just think in general is an underrated uh, uh john album and i'm sure. sure we'll i'm sure we'll get to that uh in, in the future i hope we will because i just as i said over the years i just have liked it more and more mm-hmm. uh and so uh i chose and i noticed a couple of people mentioned it too what you got no. uh, which mm. i just one of my favorites of his because it's also i mean first of all just a great vocal uh on uh, on there and some just some great guitar bass um but it's also kind of chronicling in a way his uh lost weekend i mean it's kind of a confessional uh song for him as well but it's just a also just a good rocker uh Mm -hmm. and finally i know i've mentioned the song i've probably mentioned it many times on this show but bless you Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) one of his most beautiful ballads should have sneezed yep (laughs) oh (laughs) I see what you did there, Joe. And, uh, <laughs> um, but it's, it's just such a beautiful song. And, and I think it, the, the vocals that John uh, does on, you know, has on that, they're just so tender. And it's just a kind of a vocal style that you didn't see enough on, right. on John's songs. Right. Um, you know, you really didn't. And, and the, the, the lyrics on there are just, you know, just so special kind of, saying you know a message to to whoever yoko was with to you know just to be you know love her and be careful with it would be what a mess kind-hearted yeah mm. yeah what a kind-hearted be, be warm message. And kind. Yeah, yeah i mean i i just that is such a special message and uh so i've always loved that that song as well so i so that's how i approach it i tried to do one that showed all i mean not only great songs but to show the different sides not bad mm-hmm. yeah he was know, so it, good I'm he sorry, really at, was at, oh, at explaining the how complicated a relationship can be exactly right. you know yeah. with so yeah. few words too yep. absolutely That's you know and sure. it's, it's not only was 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 it was it easy for me for john but but not only because it, he had the less amount of material but he also i think had the le- the least amount of singles as well especially yeah, that, that from, was the main thing especially from me. the albums because you're looking at plastic ono band one single imagine one single mind games one single so i mean mm. that, it was mm-hmm. it was uh, it was a lot easier to pick you know songs from his catalog yep mm. exactly so yeah that yeah. wasn't quite so hard but now here comes a hard one. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> Holy cow, <laughs> is this hard? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I pick one and I'm like, ah, oh, damn, that was a single. <laughs> like, oh shoot, that was a single. <laughs> so that was, yeah, this this was a tough one, but but you know, darn it, we're we're going yeah. to do it. So mm. all right, everybody. Next is Paul. So so uh so share your your Paul picks. Uh, so we're going to share ours. Uh, so uh, so Ken, why don't we start with you? How what are your four Paul deep tracks? Okay. Well, before I mention them, 
I think this might also confuse people too, because some of the songs that were, were mentioning, like What You Got, for example, was a B-side, but mm -hmm. it was a B-side from the album. Exactly. Right. So, so it's legal. Count. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yes, it's legal. And I say that because my first choice here with Paul was a B-side, and that's Too Many People. Mm -hmm. uh, too Many People is such a great album opener and everything about it is so wonderful. Right. The vocals, the arrangement, <clears throat> the way it ends, how it suspends the way that it does with the lead guitar work and everything. Oh, it's just, it's classic McCartney through and through. Um, that could have easily, to me, have been an A-side of a single for Paul. But uh, I definitely think that's, you know, there's so many great album cuts from from all four of them. It's really tough. Um, and then I'm also trying to consider what are my personal favorites, which may not be everybody else's. Right. Should I just go right. with may maybe album cuts that were played on the radio that were in singles that more people might know? Um, but in this case, I was self-indulgent. <laughs> and, I, and I had to put Little Lamb Dragonfly in there mm, because yeah. I just think it's such a gorgeous tune through and through. It's one of those songs, like I've said, where Paul has many different melodies that are all intertwined and somehow it all flows so easily. And um, I just think it's a masterpiece. I really do. I, I wish that um, at some point in his career, he had done that song live. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's just an amazing song throughout. Um, and speaking of B-sides, believe it or not, 1985 was a B-side. Right. <laughs> it was the B-side of wow. Band on the Run. Right. I mean, the come US, on. Yeah. For anybody else, for any other artist, that would have been an A-side. But I had to put yeah. that in there. It's, it's um, along with Only Love Remains, I, I rate those two songs as my two favorite uh, Paul songs post-Beatles. 1985 is, just, you know, so catchy. I love the whole piano arrangement, everything about it, the harmonies, how it stops, picks up again. Um, I just think 1985 is such a classic. So glad that Paul added that to his set list. And um, as much as I also wanted to put in something from the, the late 70s from Paul, I didn't because I felt that I had to put Beware My Love in there because um, I remember so well when Wings of the Speed of Sound came out and rock stations here in New York um, were playing almost every single cut from that album from the different members of Wings too. And Beware My Love got a ton of airplay and it's a great song that he did live during the, the Wings Over America tour. Really worked well as a live song and I love the whole arrangement of that one too. You know, um, there are certain rock songs from, from Paul's solo career I wish he'd bring back into his live set. Beware My Love is one of those songs. I just think, uh, and the harmonies are great on that particular one. So um, just thinking of it as one of the great album cuts when album rock was going deeper on McCartney, um, whereas now you have to be grateful if they play anything uh, from new McCartney. But uh, Beware My Love, I would definitely put in there. Yep. Yeah, it's really funny. Uh, there are certain songs, in fact, uh, some people were a bit mentioning songs in the comments that, you know, like Jealous Guy, were like, wait, that wasn't a single? Because yeah. it's, it's, you know, been played so much. I have or, it from another country, I, mm -hmm. and it's a single. I think eventually it was a 12-inch single in England. It was. Yeah. But, it's hard uh, to keep track of other countries, though. Yeah, it is. I mean, that's yeah, yeah. that would have I mean, yeah, that would have been just impossible to do. But but I mean, it is interesting because other songs, you know, Paul decided to start playing live and, and everything. Mm. So, you know, so you you now looking back, you're like, wait a minute, that that wasn't a single. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know, mm. so I mean, because it's become so familiar, like 19, 1985 and, and stuff like that, you kind of forget that. Oh, yeah. You know, that that's just that's an album track that he just decided to start playing live so we you know, oh, are you sure because but, beware my love was the b-side to let the let them in single right yeah, yeah that's why B -sides are okay oh, okay yeah, if yeah they but you see on the, an album. Uh, i should just say something the album. i'll interject we have to be more clear because nowhere was it ever said that I know that you could pick a B-side if it was on the album. I would have had a lot more easy time. I thought no single, no B-sides, no A-side. I, I, I so that's why I had an incredibly hard time doing this. So you won't hear, find any A-sides or B-sides even on the album on my list. 
<laughs> we did say it in our notes. We did, no. Joe. No. Mm-hmm. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's awful reaction. <laughs> I think he's with me on this. You can you can make changes. That's all right. No, I still have time. No, I don't care. I'm like I'm like thinking what's that's why I was joking. I said there's nothing left. There's nothing left. I was saying, and I'm like, oh yeah. I tried. I tried my best to avoid B sides, but a couple of people mentioned one of my picks is a B side, and I'm like, ah, shoot. (laughs) So (laughs) I got a pretty lame Paul list. Yeah. So then when you just said yeah, B sides are legal, I'm like, oh good. If they're uh, on the album. And by the way, 1985 got a lot of airplay on rock radio, too, when it first came out. Right. Oh, Most yeah. of Band on the Run did. And mm-hmm. Venus and Mars. So. Doesn't surprise yep. me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Joe, how about you? What are your Paul picks? Oh, skip me. I got, I got some pretty good. I didn't <laughs> oh, get anything no, good. Go no. <laughs> I didn't get anything good like Beware, be, uh, beware my love. No, I didn't get anything different good stuff. like that. No, yeah. it is what I did you with, that, with that. You you know, mm-hmm. well, that no, that idea song. in mind that I wasn't if it was a single, like it doesn't exist, like A or B side. Yeah. So I didn't go, I didn't go there. So what I, I went hear. with was Tomorrow, first mm-hmm. of all. That's a yep. great song. A single that should have been. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Right. absolutely. Beautiful, right. beautiful song. Right. I mean, uh, I don't have a lot to say about these. We know them, you know. Um, then I have Every Night from oh, McCartney, yeah. another mm-hmm. standout track, along I with Baby I'm Amazed. That. I almost picked that. Yep. Which we, you know, we didn't really consider. Maybe I'm amazed because of the live version, really being a single and all that. So, I, so I picked every night. Gorgeous song. Yeah. Um, here's something unusual. Uh, I thought that I went with one of my favorites from London Town, Cafe on the Left Bank. Yes. Um, I really. That's what. That's almost my favorite track. Almost on that album. Other than uh, you know the single with a little luck and maybe the title track, um, I, and I just love that. I feel every time I hear that song, I feel like that's exactly where I'm sitting. Every time he sings that song, I, I love. That's the point on the album. I just love to get to it. Uh, um, and then I picked for the fourth one, uh, "She's My Baby." Um, a little ditty love from it, from Paul, it, you know, it's a pretty little little song, uh, fun song, you know. Again, and that's just my picks for Paul. Just again, thinking not in terms of uh, you know B sides that were on the okay because they were on the album. You're getting a lot of approval in the comments, Joe. So oh, am those, I? Are, wow, those are very good picks. <laughs> what are you worried well, about? Yeah. What are you worried about? Yep. You're <laughs> Me? Getting- you Who's worried? <laughs> yep, Marvin. What's the use of worrying? Marvin. Yeah. Tony, no use. <laughs> Marvin, Tony, Tom, Green, they all like your picks. <laughs> okay. Who's going to argue with every night? Exactly. Mm. I almost picked it. Absolutely. Yeah. So <laughs> all excellent picks. <laughs> and uh, yep. So, uh, Tom, how about you? Yeah, well, Joe, it looks like go to town on this. Yeah, well, I, I had fun with this one. I really did. I bet and, like, you did. And, and Ken, you were talking about how you know your feelings on these tracks, and you know, I did go with personal favorites, you know, mm. um, and and specifically at the moment, you know what I'm saying. So, okay. like, I I know I know has been a really personal favorite of mine, you know, these last couple of years. So, but uh, you know, I got a couple, you know, a couple that uh, that Joe had, you know, every night, uh, you know, from the McCartney album. How can you go wrong? with that you know i think his vocals are are excellent and his guitar playing you know the acoustic guitar on there is wonderful um i went to um went to a wildlife next and i went with some people never know that has been a personal favorite of mine uh since i've heard that song uh many years ago and um just you know i just want to give a little nod to linda too because i love how those two how their two voices blend together on that song um, Joe, I completely agree with you on Cafe on the Left Bank. When I'm hearing that song, I feel like I am on the <laughs> Cafe on the Left. And I got to give it to Jimmy McCullough, man. He just kills it on guitar on that throughout that. Whole oh, beautiful! Song. I should have mentioned that. You know, Sweet, yeah. You Sweet. know, so great job from him. And then another one uh, from Paul that's become a personal favorite since the Archive Box came out uh, a few years back, and that's uh, San Ferry Inn. Uh, it's a track that I've never oh. really, you know considered uh back yeah. in the day um but uh listening to that more carefully over the last couple few years from the archive edition i you know i love i love the uh, the horn playing in that one and i love his bass line throughout the throughout that track and um really come to appreciate that song over the last uh four or five years since it's been out the archive's been been out so 
Cafe on the Left Bank has always been yeah. a favorite of mine. Yeah. It's one of those songs that I wish had been a single. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Matter of fact, I had to go back and double check that one because I wasn't one hundred percent sure. Um, mm. So, but uh, but yeah, um, good, uh, great, great track from London mm. Town. Great stuff, yeah. absolutely. And uh, well, uh, as for my picks, uh, Joe, we're kind of the same mind on a couple of these. <laughs> <laughs> um, this this was another one where I tried to balance out, you know, kind of the acoustic Paul, the eccentric Paul, the mm. rocking, <laughs> the, you know, tuneful. I mean, I tried to do a little bit of everything. Uh, so I picked that will, uh, that would be something. Yeah. <laughs> I mm. almost, I almost picked mm. every night and, mm. uh, but that, that would be something is one of my other uh, favorites. Um, uh, then I picked for the eccentric Paul Monkberry Moon Delight. I just oh, think yes. that is so fun. I mean, yeah. so fun. So got gotta have a little ram in there. Oh, that's uh, great. Yeah, what a what a fun song that is. Um, then for the the rocking one, uh, Mrs. Vanderbilt. I mean, that is such mm. a fun sing along mm. kind of uh, you know song, and and uh, you know you you just can't help but you know tap your toes to it, and it's just it's fun. I mean, what can yeah, I say? I, I, I love how that went over live too. I yeah, if, that's, yeah, you know what? That's the thing. That's what made me like it even more. Oh yeah. That, that I think the live version is even better than the studio version. I mean, that mm. went over so well live that it made me like the song even more. Mm. Uh, you know, it just had such an energy right. uh, live. So, and finally, she's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it's Keep just, mopping it up. Yeah, yeah I mean mop, it's, mop, just, mop. Yep, it's just a great, you know, it's also yeah, it has a little bit of a you know, a little bit of a soulful kind of tinge to it. Mm -hmm. Um I've just always enjoyed that song. So yeah, when when you said it, Joe, I'm like <laughs> yeah, another so an, an, another yeah. good bass line too he, he's yeah he has some really good bass lines in that on the uh speed of sound album yes mm. I, I agree and and so yeah you really hear the bass on that uh and uh, yeah i mean it's just uh you know a fun uh you know one of his lighter tunes but it works and and as i said it's got a little little soul in it um always enjoyed it so uh so yeah. those are so those are right so uh so joe we were kind of a couple of those on the same wavelength yeah, sure. there so yeah. that's uh, that's really cool so uh so yeah again just try to you know balance out his different sides so uh yeah. all right well this should be interesting george i'm i'm very interested to hear your picks and and everybody's picks in the in the comments here um yeah this was kind of difficult i don't know about you guys but for me there were different songs where I think, you know, oh, this is it. And then, oh, damn it, it was a single, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was really tough. So, um, all right, let's uh, let's start uh, with you, Tom. What uh, what George singles, or not singles, yeah. album cuts did you pick? Um, I, you know, a lot of favorites. That's, <laughs> that's yeah. what I picked. Mm. Um, man, uh, you know, George wasn't that difficult, to be honest with you. Um, a lot of great tracks I could have picked that I love, but uh, the started off, started off run of the mill, um, mm. just, you know, classic lyrics, you know, I mean, we know the story, but um, uh, sung well, written well, uh, played well. Uh, one of my favorites from, from All Things Must Pass, probably, probably my second favorite song on, on that, that, that album. Um, uh, second of all, an, a song that almost was a single, but didn't make it. Uh, Don't Let Me Wait So Long, uh, or Too, too long. long, sorry, Too Long, yeah. sorry. Um, you know, again, it's just a, another fun little jam, um, you know, not much to the lyrics, doesn't need to be, you know, very thoughtful, but, um, but musically, I, I think it's a really good, and it's catchy, and it's a really catchy song, to, in my opinion. Um, arguably my favorite ballad from his solo career, A Beautiful Girl, um, another favorite of mine, um, I'll, that'll be on every single list that I do with George, um, and then another one that'll be, you know, on my list for George, and I know uh, I love uh, uh, Mayo's uh, response to this every time, but uh, I can't stop thinking about you is just... Uh, <laughs> you know. I didn't get a chance to talk about it during the extra texture. No, you didn't. Because uh, oh, my mic right. wasn't working, but it's right. working yeah. now, so I'll just say, right. can't stop thinking Thank about you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Air has the Again, time gone. Right, exactly. <laughs> when well, you look at the time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, Again, I love the organ or the, the the keyboard playing throughout that whole song, whether it's the piano or mm -hmm. the you know the whatever the uh, keyboards. I just it, I I love the playing uh, you know on that, mm. and it's so simple, you know, right to well, the that point. That it is. You know? I like that point where it goes. I, I don't know what the words exactly. When the day comes, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That's why. Yeah, so I got it in, folks. For those who wanted to see my extra texture routine, I got a little bit. In. <laughs> There's no way I can mute him, is there? No. Kids. <laughs> <laughs> I can uh, do that. <laughs> there you go. We we love you, everybody. We love you, uh, right. Danny. We love you, Olivia. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, Tom, this was really scary. Just as you were sharing your your thoughts, uh, Hudson uh, Ranny just mentioned his and your and his choices. Like as you were reading yours off, his were like identical almost really? to yours. Yeah, I mean, mentioned. Don't let me wait wow. too long. And beautiful girl. Nice. <laughs> like just well, I, you if you don't mind, if you don't mind giving me, I want to uh, direct people to Hudson because Hudson is, is a young fan and he just started his own uh, YouTube podcast called I Know I Know uh, a Beatle oh. and Solos uh, uh, podcast so um, you know check that out again type in I Know I Know and uh, Hudson maybe you can uh, type in what the, the name of your uh, podcast on YouTube and everybody can check it out there. Nice. So, I'm so glad he's giving attention to John's song there. Yeah, by calling yep. it that. Very yeah. nice. Yep, love yeah. the title. So, yep, all right. Check that out. And Tom Brennan agrees with you as well, Tom. And uh, don't let me wait too long. And beautiful girls. So, Thank <laughs> you. Oh. so wow, you, you, those That's are good. popular, popular yeah. choices. So, uh, all right, just to be different, let's go to Ken. How about you? What uh, What are your choices? Okay. Well, first of all, you know, run of the mill is one of those I really wanted to put in there. That's become mm. one of my favorites. You yeah. could put almost anything from all things must pass. Probably. This collection. Yeah. But um, except the singles. Yeah. But yeah. Remembering, <laughs> remembering how radio was so over this album when it first came out and playing most of the songs. But one song they played a lot because it was so commercial and it wasn't a single mm. is Awaiting on You All, which yeah. I would mm -hmm. definitely put into any collection. So damn catchy. It really is. It could have been a hit. I don't, you know, <laughs> there could have been more than the two hits. From I, I'm Sean Allen really. agrees with you. I'm shocked <laughs> that there was only two singles from that album. I, I have no, I would love to know the reasoning why they didn't release more singles from that album. Yeah, you know how much yeah. you can you can apply that logic to solo Beatle albums. Well, but specifically <laughs> yeah. because it was a double album and right. it was so strong. You know, I I think the the title track "All Things Must Pass" would have been a nice would have been a really good single mm. as well. You know. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm thinking of commerciality. You right. know, mm -hmm. if not for you, got a ton of airplay. Yep. Yeah. You know, um, so much from that album could have been really hits. But even when you think about, you know, imagine only had one single exactly <laughs> oh, yeah right. that's crazy What's going on there red rose I was shocked. only had one and single one single yeah yeah mm -hmm. wildlife didn't have any <laughs> yeah well, it should have had tomorrow it yeah. really should have yeah anyway so i have a waiting on you all and just like you tom yeah. don't let me wait too long yeah. it should be part of the the show the singles that never were yeah yeah great. and uh really that that could have been the second single right yep. after give me love should've very been. catchy yeah. And uh, like you said, Tom, very simple lyrics, very repetitive, but mm -hmm. it just sticks in your head. You know, very it's catchy. so much a yeah. catchy. I could have heard that on Top 40 Radio. Mm -hmm. um, one of my favorites of George's entire solo career is The Answers at the End, which yeah. I think is a masterpiece on the Extra Texture album. I love the whole message in there, mixing the combined with, you know, uh, the, the, the preachy, the spiritual um, with philosophical, which is what George does so well. Um, I love the whole arrangement. You know, there's a lot of extra texture that production wise sounds like it could have been on All Things Must Pass. This real heavy sound, very piano based. It's got a real spirituality to it, you know. Um, and that's one of those songs. I love, love, love the answers at the end. I want to just interject and say, so do I, uh, Ken. That's one of the songs that I do enjoy quite a bit mm. on extra texture. So I agree with you. And uh, there were two others I like on that album. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. 
Just don't sing the ones that you don't like. <laughs> I don't have to. I don't have to sing well. That's the beauty of it. <laughs> and my final choice is one of the many great love songs from George's solo career. Mm. Um, Your love is forever, mm. which yes. I think is absolutely exquisite. So laid back. Love the slide guitar work in it. You know, kind of like. So much of what he's done on albums like George Harrison or Gon Trapo, you feel like you're on a tropic island. <laughs> you're at the beach or whatever, and the palm trees are swaying. You know, I get that whole vibe um, from songs like that one. But it's just right. such a gorgeous tune. Mm. You know, can't say more about it. But Your yeah. Love is Forever is one of his greatest all-time love songs. Good pick. Yep. Good, yep. Yep. That, Absolutely, can't from a wonderful with album too. Right. Yeah. And then again, with, George again with living in the material world, you know, going on the strength of "Give Me Love," you know, being the only single from that album, and then that album being a number one album. Again, no excuse to not have a follow up single. You know, you know, it's it's ironic. You know, "Give Me Love" is a number one single. How do you mm -hmm. not have a second single after right. number yeah, one? Exactly. The same thing, same right. time. Red Rose Speedway. Right. Number one Same hit with one my one love. One no one second one single. Right. Where is the logic? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. So, all right, Joe, you're up. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I wasn't going to put this one on the list because I knew other people would have it. And that is, don't let me wait too long. <laughs> a sing single that should have been. I said, everybody's going to have this, but it begs to be a single. And it, was, and it was supposedly going to be a single. Right. Or, right. right? Mm -hmm. hey, oh, man, that's, that's a good one. So that's one. Um, second, Tom, I'm with you. I put Beautiful Girl, mm. gorgeous song, 33 and a third. Yeah. Did that have its roots in Beatles days? I think it was an older song. Uh, um, that, uh, all Things yeah, Must Pass. Around, and it's, all Things Must Pass. Because right. yeah. it was earlier than that that he was he was wanted to, to do something yeah. with that. So it's, it's just a gorgeous song. Um, so <laughs> those two have already, already been mentioned. I'm going to go to back to the self-titled George Harrison album. It's got so many beautiful songs on there. It's an album that I think is getting a lot more attention lately from the circles I'm in. And people are really appreciating it and rating it closer to the top of his albums. Mm -hmm. I think with, oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. with good, good reason. Good. And I picked a track from there. Um, I picked If You Believe. Oh, yeah. From there, because it's uh, it's poppy, a little more, uh, you know, movement to it. It's a, for George, you know. Again, I, you know, I was like before I was saying John didn't rock out a lot in his solo career. Really, I don't think George really did. But this is mm. is, is is a nice up tempo kind of song. I think it could have been a single, also. You mm. know, it's a good choice for one. So that was uh, if you believe. And lastly, I went to the Dark Horse album of all places. And I, uh, there's a number of songs I enjoy in there, but I went with Simply Shady. Ah, I love it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I almost went Shady. with that. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it just, and even though his voice is rough on there, I don't know, sometimes, I don't know, I can enjoy, I enjoy Dark Horse, even though his voice is on the horse side, the song Dark Horse. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, Ding Dong, Ding Dong, a few others. Mm -hmm. But Simply Shady was one I've always liked, even a little ode to Sexy Sadie in the lyrics right. at, at the yeah. end. Yeah. The, so the, um, I really like that song. So that's my uh, mm -hmm. last choice for George. The the musicians that he assembled for Sexy, or uh, for Simply Shady, Simply sorry, Shady. Were, were, were top notch for sure. Well, that was the LA Express. Yeah. Yes. Joni that's Mitchell's right. people yeah. who were also yeah. on Harry's on tour. Right. You know, yep. but uh, the songs on Dark Horse are great songs. You might have a problem with his voice at the time. I'm so used to it. You know, it doesn't bother right. me. But the well, it's funny that I strong. don't mind it. I, I don't know why I don't mind it on there as much as extra texture. Uh, uh, it's a little more I have a horse on Dark Horse, maybe a little more, you know, warbly, warbly on uh, extra texture for me, you know. But, mm. but uh, I don't know why I, a Dark Horse, I'm forgiving more. I don't know. I, I enjoy some of those songs. Mm. Yep. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Great, great, great. Okay. And uh, so I'll, and again, I try to have some variety showing different sides. So with George, yeah, it was hard not to pick so like every track off of all things must pass. Mm. I mean, let's, let's face it, but I pick, I did pick two that I, I think show 
uh, George is, you know, a little bit of a, you know, harder rocking kind of side, but, and I just love these songs anyway, uh, Wah Wah, which yeah. is, you know, <laughs> pit, what I call pissed off George. I love yeah. pissed off George. <laughs> yeah. Not, you know, I mean, not guilty, which I, I actually like the, the original version better than the softer, you know, the softer one, but, uh, but it's still, I mean, it's still pissed off George, but this one, wow, wow, <laughs> wow. I mean, I, I love it. And, and uh, just the, 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 even the, you know, Phil Spector production, I actually do like on that one. Uh, mm. The other one, let it down. Mm. Uh, I love, love, love let it down uh how it goes kind of yes. back and forth big, with softer and then the yeah, big, big yes. Oh, yes i mean it's it's just incredible um and uh so that that's uh those are my my two there uh then from 33 and a third which is probably my second favorite uh after all things must pass um is uh pure smoky mm. uh, because you know i gotta have my iron bay you know that you know that and i mean come on a tribute to Smokey robinson i mean you know and it is it's it's gorgeous i love the the chord changes on it um and uh, and i love the lyrics too and uh, you know and he sings it so earnestly you know he clearly you know had such a deep uh, respect and and affection for Smokey robinson and i love you know working in you know you really got a hold on me and you know right, the little, right. i just i love that song i've just always had such great affection for it um and finally and i and i had to i i think i even triple checked this to make sure it wasn't a single because I'm, I'm amazed it wasn't uh here comes the moon I, I've always yeah. loved it. It's such a beautiful song. Now it did appear, I know, on Best of Dark Horse. I yes, I, I know did. it did. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I, I had to, you know, I thought th that had to have been a single, you know, and I, right. I double trip. No. So well, it just and you bring up a good point because you know, as you and I, Kit, I mean, that's probably right around time we started uh discovering George's music. Mm -hmm. So that could you know, confuse younger fans. Yeah. Like you've got a best of dark horse and you've got this song. So you're thinking yeah. that it's that a single. Had to that, have been. That, that had to have been right, a single. Right. You know? Yeah. So, so I was, you know, I checked it, checked, like, oh, you know, made sure. And right. uh, so I, yeah, I absolutely cannot believe that wasn't the single because right. it's, it's just such a, you know, beautiful song that, you know, memorable melody. Uh, love the guitar. Uh, in there I mean just uh, that should have been a single mm -hmm. for sure well, uh, and 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 also of course from the George Harrison album which which I also love that that probably yeah all things must pass 33 and a third uh, George Harrison top right. three yeah, that's a good that's a good trio yeah. Yep. yeah I just I love all three I mean, those are those are my favorites, absolutely. So, well, you know, you big, you bring up a, a great point that you know the material is so strong here; it's very difficult. So many of these songs, we think, could have made good singles. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing is, you know, if you follow the charts like I have, like uh, with the George Harrison album "Blow Away," was top twenty. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that was a monster hit, mm -hmm. you know, but it was respectable. So, yeah. should have been big. Should have been bigger. I oh, agree. Should definitely. have been bigger. Yeah, but yeah. Um, if the first single doesn't do extremely well, you don't expect right. the follow-up to do. Mm -hmm. But when you've got a number one song like "Give Me Love," oh, you know, yeah. it's like yeah. exactly. how do you not follow that? Up? <laughs> it just it, it, wow. Automatically, the second single would at least go top forty. You would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. You know, it gives it gives it a chance because mm -hmm. you're bouncing off of something mm -hmm. that you couldn't do any better than a number one song. Yep. And I, I, by the way, I just want to say, let it down. Great choice. Very mm -hmm. complicated song if you're a yes. musician because it's loaded mm -hmm. with, um, you know, uh, different certain changes. chords like like ninths and elevenths. You know, not your mm -hmm. typical chords, more mm -hmm. jazzy kind of chords. But yep. uh, yeah, yeah, I agree. yeah, that's a good point. It is. Mm -hmm. It's a very yeah different uh, different kind of song. So mm -hmm. very true. Mm. All right. Last but definitely not least, we have Ringo. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, our uh, deep Ringo tracks. So, uh, Ken, why don't we start with you? What are your Ringo picks? And, and everybody, of course, join in. Let us know what your Ringo tracks are. Okay. Well, uh, as we all know, well, actually, some of us don't know this, but um, Bukus of Blues was the, the first single from Ringo. Mm -hmm. 
in the United States. Sentimental Journey never had any singles. And I thought it might be cool to pick one song from Sentimental Journey. And as much as you know, I love Stardust, I still think the title track might have been, you know, a really good choice. Right. The first one of all the ones from Ringo's uh, solo career. I just think the whole arrangement was just perfect, suited his voice. I think the whole album was that way, to tell you the truth. But um, Sentimental Journey is just a great song. It is a standard. So many people know it that grew up on that music and Ringo vocally just handles it perfectly. Right. And um, Richard Perry, by the way, yeah, arranging, yeah. arranging Sentimental Journey. So I would pick that as my first. Uh, but again, but again, to, you know, for confusing fans, you know, aspect, you know, there was a promotional video for it. So you would right. think that that would have been a single. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Right. There are videos, especially right. with Ringo. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to get to another think, one here soon. Yeah. <laughs> um, I put six o'clock in there Ugh, because yeah. I just think it's that's another masterpiece. You know, the other Beatles knew how to write for Ringo and six yes. o'clock to me should have been it could have been a fourth single really <laughs> from the Ringo album. It's just a beautiful song. Perfect in Ringo's range. You know, everything about it, <clears throat> that that keyboard solo in the middle the build up towards the end. Um, it's just a, a wonderful song overall. And, uh, you know, it's one of those ones, you know, if, if you're more a casual fan or someone that really has an invested time in Ringo, you, you do want to know the songs yeah, the Beatles wrote for him. Yeah. And most people hopefully know I'm the greatest, even though this is the same album. <clears throat> and hopefully they know Goodnight Vienna and they know that George co-wrote with Ringo. Right. But they may not know the songs that Paul wrote mm -hmm. for Ringo. And Six O'Clock is top notch all Agreed. around. Yep. And uh, the harmonies with Linda, you know, everything about that song is, is so perfect. Mm -hmm. I also put, you know, speaking of which, we just said songs that had a video <laughs> for which they weren't a single. Um, you Don't Know Me At All from mm -hmm. Ringo's oh, yeah. Road of Your, yeah. which was a weird one because uh, Ringo was bald at the time. <laughs> he showed off his bald. The whole video revolved around him being bald. <laughs> very bizarre. But it's a very catchy song, and it's one that I kind of wish that could have made a very good choice after a dose mm. of rock and roll. Right. I'm sure he'll agree More that so. that was a very bizarre time for him. Yes. Mm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I like Hey Baby. Yeah, but I still think mm -hmm. you don't know me at all would have made a better choice as a single. Yeah. And then um, my last song here is a personal favorite of mine. Uh, Gave it all up. Wow. From Ringo the Fourth, okay. which oh. uh, he co-wrote with Vinnie Poncia. Mm -hmm. Very sad, melancholy song that Ringo does so well. Looking back at his life, you know, you get the feeling he's in a bar and he's reflecting on his past years and all the mistakes that he made. It's one of those songs you lift your mug up and you, you, you toast your life. Um, and uh, I just think it really works very well yeah. for Ringo. Was that like on a, a single, like a B-side or something? I thought that might have been on a single, but I'm not 100% sure. I don't think so, yeah. no. You had Drowning in the Sea of Love, right. which right. had just a dream as, as a B-side. Right. And Wings. Which was right. Wings, actually Wings was a single that was, that was yeah. the first single, really. Wings. Wings and the B side of that was also just a dream. Oh, okay. The same B side right. on both uh, songs. Mm -hmm. yep. So yep. those are my four. Yeah. Good All picks. right. Nice. All nice. Interesting mm. picks. Yeah, nice eclectic uh, group there. Mm. Uh, all right, Joe. How about you? What are okay. your picks? Okay. First, six o'clock. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's a perfect song for Ringo to sing. It suits him perfectly. Paul, Paul knows how to to write for Ringo, I guess by now. Would you say? And uh, you know, <laughs> Paul, Paul and Linda together on it. You know, uh, just you know, it's, it's a lovely song. Uh, and uh, there's a longer version. Yep, I forget yep. which one's on it. Um, that's what's, what it has the longer version. The the bonus. <laughs> Good night, Vienna. You know, it was a right. bonus it's track. The bonus track, yeah. But um, originally, it was a, a there was a longer version on the cassette version, I think, and you know, there was an eight track version where I think that that's where the longer was version long. was. I had I had to put that one, you know, something from the Ringo album, uh, you know, I had it, hmm. I had it too. Next, I have "I'll Still Love You," 
mm. um, from uh, what was it, Roto Graviour? It's from right. Uh, very haunting sound, a George Harrison song. Uh, just haunting. I loved. I loved the mood of that. And there was a big thing where I think that was it that George sued Ringo because he didn't right. like, like the, the mix of it or something. I the arrangement. The... I really, I really love it. <laughs> I still love it. Yeah, like I still What's not you. to like about it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's. Uh, well, so I I, I'm, I'm, I can't say, but maybe some people find a little dreary sounding. I don't know, but I I just love it. Um, let's see. Oh, that's two. And then I went with. Uh, I don't know. I I was torn by a couple here. I decided to go back to the Ringo album for "Have You Seen My Baby," mm. otherwise known as "Hold Hold On." One or the other. I don't know if care what they switched it on the album. Uh, there yeah. was, a, and I had a couple of copies of the actual vinyl album where it was listed as one, and they switched it the other way. I don't know if "Hold On" was listed first, then yeah, later pressings became. Have you seen my baby? Now I've got. Was that a Gary Wright? Who wrote that one? Randy uh, Newman. Randy Newman. Randy yeah. Newman. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. It, again, it's just so. Again, so fun. Uh, you know, and Ringo is in good spirit through the whole album, but on that song in particular, I love the way his mood in that. Uh, do you, uh, it's, it's, do it, you have both copies of that of the Ringo album? That have yeah, the, I'm okay. crazy enough that I that I bought them both to have. Well, to what's, have both well, what, well, well, what what's having multiple copies of an album? You know, I mean, oh really? Big what? <laughs> yeah, no, no big deal, no big deal. <laughs> right? I mean, who does that? Right? It's a mad who, bag of shells. Who buys for us? Multiple right. copies <laughs> of albums, you know. Yeah. yeah, what's that? Who does that? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, so okay, I got uh, those three. Now, for the last one, I made I made a substitute here um, because, you know, I, as I say, I didn't realize for whatever reason that you could pick a B side if it was on the album, right? So I did a Are little, little look at. substitutes allowed, Ken? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, I said, well, no, I'll tell you why. I'm just this kidding. Is you can. I know, I know, but yeah. uh, I'm joking. But, no, who's on? You, you, you're joking, but I just want to say I was going to put this on originally, but I thought, no, that's that's uh, that's a B side, and it's Who Needs a Heart from hmm. uh, I believe it's the B side of something. Or tonight, is it tonight or Heart on My Sleeve? One or the other. It's the B side of from my research. That just was kind of doing it here. <laughs> on the phone and it is is, is ringo and, and vinnie poncia wrote it right and uh well that's a little good upbeat up tempo kind of fun song on the otherwise uh underrated for my money bad boy album right uh which i hope we get to one day because i'd like to talk about that album a little yeah. bit and uh well, there's so many other ones i wanted to put up from that album you know tonight maybe it was tonight maybe that was the I don't know, tonight was a single also. I forget which this was the B-side of, but I wasn't going to use it. But now I'm glad I can I can put it in as I realized. So uh -huh. there you go. Ringo. Yeah. All right. Yeah, by the way, hold on. The, the, the initial copies of Ringo had the wrong title. It really mm -hmm. is, have you seen my baby? So they corrected it later on. Right, oh, that's really? what it was. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's funny too Good because song. I have mm -hmm. I have a uh, my CD of Give My Regards to Broad Street has Good Night Princess as Good Night Lonely Princess, which Ooh, is right. not really correct. It's mm -hmm. just Good Night Princess. Yeah, huh. you were pointing that out yeah. on the show. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, interesting. Are you sure about that? I've always thought of it as the as Good Night Lonely. Princess. I was pointed out yeah. by a few hardcore fans that it was good. It's it's a Good Night Princess, not Good Night Lonely Princess. Okay. So I have the Columbia sure. CD that says Good Night Lonely Princess, but which is what I the, have. Yeah, but all my other copies say Good Night, uh, Good Night Princess on it. So interesting. Yeah, yeah. there was a bunch right. of songs. Good night. There was Good Night right. Irene. <laughs> right. There's a lot of songs. Good night tonight. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah except that's honeymoon. a honeymooners reference. Right. Oh, okay. oh, here we go. We're going We're for the ninety-nine thousand dollar answer. Right. Oh my God. All Thanks, right, but, yeah, we better we better get to you, Tom, before the honeymooners <laughs> reference take over. Yeah. Right. Take over. Yeah. So, yep. So, what what are your Ringo? All choices? right. Well, we are three for three for six o'clock. Just uh, a magical right. uh, uh, track that that Paul gave to um, to Ringo. And yeah, I do think it's definitely single worthy. Um, I do tend to like the longer version a little bit more than than the shorter one, but uh, but that's just you know that's just me. But yeah, yeah, I love Linda's contributions to the backing vocals on that track. Mm. And, and it just, you know, Paul does know how to write for Ringo. Um, 
Uh, one other one, the closer for the Ringo album, You and Me, Babe, uh, I oh. think is just, you know, a great way to, to close out an album. I wish every album clo- kind of closed out with like a little, you know, thank you, goodbye, you know, I want to thank this person, that person, you know, uh, kind of thing. And uh, again, you know, George Harrison, you know, again, he worked really well with with, with, with Richie and uh, man, I wish they did more together uh, in throughout the throughout their lives um, and mal evans co-wrote that. and mal evans is a co-write absolutely mm. absolutely i wish right. he was still yeah. around to talk yeah. about that you know yeah. oh yeah. Boy, boy what stories he would have to tell oh, oh no mm-hmm. kidding you kidding yeah. me he probably would have to wait till every all of them were passed on to tell the real juicy stories <laughs> I, but... bet. I bet I was going to make a joke, but I won't. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, one that I really enjoy, I've come to really enjoy since doing uh, this this show with you guys is, uh, can she do it like she dances? Uh, I had because... that on my list. That's the one I last minute substituted the one I wanted to do originally. For. I was going to, I was going to go with that. I love how he just belts it out and he almost <laughs> seems tired as he's belting it out. You yeah, know, he almost yeah. seems like he's winded, but he just keeps on going, you know, with the yeah. oh, I love it. You know, love and it. it's, it's so crazy. Yeah, it's 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 really it's a fun track and it's a Ringo. It's a Ringo track. Uh, you know, it's just yeah. fun, silly, you know, kind of sing along in the bar type songs. You Back know. in the day, hanging out in the yeah. bar. You know. right. right, exactly, exactly. And then um you know, again, the song where you know, I know Joe mentioned this one. Another confusing song where it had a promotional video. Uh, I'll I'll still love you, uh, but not a single. Uh, mm. and however, this one had its roots with the All Things Must Pass uh, sessions as well. George did work on the song then, and then also uh, was going to give it to a couple other acts. Uh, but uh, Silla Black, Silla Black, thank you. Yes, well, um, Leon <laughs> Russell too. Leon, Leon Russell, Russell and well. Mary. Oh, wow. yeah. And, yeah. Yes, yeah. So this the song has a little bit of a history, and let's let's hope that uh, when we get that all things pass all things must pass box set, that we're going to get a little bit of this and a little bit of uh, beautiful girl and all those other songs that early um, takes volume two. Early t- <laughs> volume two, yeah. Wouldn't that be nice? It should be volume three, actually. By yeah. now, yeah. You should have yeah. called the other one volume one yeah. and done. <laughs> yeah, really. But oh, I man. really, I really like what Ringo and and that team did with uh, "I'll Still Love You," and I think his vocals are really strong on that. And you know why George felt the need to sue him for for that arrangement or whatever is yeah. whatever but uh you know i'm sure they resolved it and as oh. always they remain friends they joke about it. they joked about it on that what's your was what that uh it's your Asheville. life uh, yeah like, or whatever show Asheville. it was when 1988 they had a good laugh about it yeah, george was laughing great laugh. it. they had a great george laugh was, yeah you kind know, of abashedly oh, laugh right <laughs> you know you know so, it sounds like that recording that Ringo made was how it would sound if George was on it and producing it. Perhaps. Oh. You mm. know, the lead guitar solo, which I think was Jesse Ed Davis, right. sounds just like what George would have played. Maybe. I mean, I love it as it is, but I mean, I'm just ob- objectively looking at it. You know, it has like a, a dreary sound, which I, I yes. love, yeah. but maybe that's what he would object to. I don't know. Mm. I love right. it that way. Yeah. yeah. So do well, I. Excellent. So those are my, my, my four Ringo. Wow. Well, oh, this has been great. Yeah. They're, they're all over, you know, all over the place. I mean, there's so yeah. many to choose from Ringo. Um, all around. We all run. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He's going to get it. Oh my God. You're going oh, to get yours. it. <laughs> <laughs> all By the right, time kid, I finish for you, you will be in no position all to right. get ours. All right. take, take us home, kid. All right. I'll take it home here. So, <laughs> So believe it or not, I did not pick six o'clock. So, <laughs> so I'm sorry. I'm not going to uh, make three it for up. four. Oh, three well. for four. Sorry. Um, I went with some different ones. However, there's one that uh, that there will be an agreement on. Um, <laughs> so I picked one that um, our, our good friend Susan uh, Gagne uh, mentioned earlier in the comments. So right. she'll like this. Uh, Sunshine Life for me. Oh, I've loved yeah, that. Yeah, oh, good. is that what a what a joyful uh, track. And I mean, come on, you have Ringo, you have George, George. Harrison writing it, and you have the band. I mean, yes. you know, it doesn't get any better. Uh, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, and it's a hoedown. Come on, you know it's it's just it is so much fun. Um, and then you know I just love kind of in the same vein, but you know country Ringo. I I love mm. when he does country songs. So uh, I went with crying 
Good. Uh, from Ringo's mm. Roto Gravura. Uh, mm. And uh, and the stuff he wrote with uh, Vinnie Poncia is really mm. interesting, you know. And, and by the way, I decided with my list, I wanted to avoid covers. I decided to really challenge myself nice. and avoid covers, you know. So, yep. So I decided. It's a queen. Go yeah, with, that's deep. <laughs> that's don't you forget it, Tom. And so. <laughs> And so now, oh, I'm, I yeah, I mean, other people can write the stuff for Ringo, but yeah, right. no covers. All right. Mm. So then, um, also from uh, Ringo's Rudiger Gravure, I can never say that right. Yeah. Um, I just, it's so hard to say. Um, Cooking in the Kitchen of Love. I always thought that was a <laughs> fun, funny song. Uh, I mean, I love John, but he's not infallible with that. Yeah, I, mean, I always <laughs> thought it was just funny. I mean, it's it's good, just good for Ringo. Good for Ringo. Yeah, yeah, it's good for Ringo. That's exactly. I think. John, and we've kind of said this, John, Paul, George knew how to write for Ringo. Hmm. And, you know, they could really write for his range. They could write for, you know, his character, you know, and and his personality. And this is another example of it. I'm not saying this is the greatest song Ringo ever did, but it's just fun. You know, it's it's just kind of a, a, you know, kind of a funny thing. So I don't know. I've just always had kind of a, an affection for it just kind of as a fun fun little little ditty mm-hmm. and uh and then finally joe we agree again <laughs> who, need, who needs a heart oh, <laughs> and you didn't have to you didn't have to check it during the show to make sure it was okay b-side you had it right yep i had it already yeah <laughs> i i really and and i really think we should do a bad boy show because i would like to revisit i used to kind of blow this album off mm. but oh, i think oh, yeah. we should revisit it because yeah this is really a a, a good song another vinnie poncia uh, collaboration uh just a fun straightforward rocker horns you know we love our horns on this show we've it's talked new. about that boy you've got some you know, horngasm as we talked about the last time this isn't quite on if that you could level. say that i you could say what i was going to say yeah. about horn. <laughs> it's not quite on that level but <laughs> but it's it's you know but you got the horns it's it's really right. great um you know hor- harmonies in the chorus uh this could have been a single easily i think mm, um yeah you know and uh great you know kind of you know kind of yeah a side there you go a side uh for sure and um you know great kind of a little bit of like a jerry lee lewis kind of piano in it no it's just a you know, great song i been and, and ringo's voice on terrific on it yeah so why this wasn't an a side don't know i mean i think it, it could have been Fair so enough. you know ringo and vinnie poncia were really a good team mm-hmm. they were you yeah know, they yeah. wrote quite a bit of material in the 70s i don't know why yeah they broke things off you know i never hear ringo talk about him no you yeah, know I Vinny, Vinny is still with us i think yes um, he is yeah. i think i saw a show at, maybe at jones beach i think Vinny ponzi was was in the audience maybe i mm-hmm. remember ringo mentioning him okay. if i'm not mistaken also my memory's really getting screwy but uh well, several years to, ago we need to find us some, some Vinny and get him on the shizzo with us <laughs> Yeah, I've tried for years. You can't even find any information about him online. Really? Doesn't have a website, nothing. Oh, yeah, he'd be fascinating to talk to. I'd love to talk to Vinny. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, if anyone out there knows how to get in touch with him, (laughs) pass it along. We'd love to know. That'd be great. So, you know, one thing I wanted to say about Cooking in the Kitchen of Love, I love the ad libbing. Yeah. At the end it's of the fun. song, you know, with Ringo, no garlic, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. It's just fun. It's yeah. it, that's what it is. I mean, it's I'm not saying it's his best of all time, but it shows Ringo's silly side. You know, right. that's what I like about it: his humor and uh, mm-hmm. and John's. You know, so yep, fun stuff. Yeah. So I think you know, if somebody uh, somebody wrote, and I apologize, uh, I I can't find who it is earlier said this would be a great compilation. That you know, talk about eclectic, mm-hmm. and, and yeah. it really is. Yeah. I yeah. mean, it it just shows in the solo years, you know, just how many styles yep. that they covered, and yeah. uh, and and just all these wonderful album tracks that uh, you know they weren't hits, but they are very gems for sure. Mm-hmm. The and there are a lot of them in the solo catalog. Yes, yeah. for the, sure. The Beatles very are the, they're the kings of eclectic. Mm-hmm. Yep. The they were they that really way are. when they were together. Right. They're that way on their own. The more that you study their solo music. 
mm -hmm. I mean, just just looking at Paul's catalog, you know. Oh, good point. And and uh, you know the ambient stuff that he did for the firemen, or uh, mm. you know the full blown classical works to go with all of his pop and rock stuff, and country music, and you know they crossed everything. Really, they really did. Yeah, they really did. It's it's just it's amazing to to think about. It it really is. So. Mm. Uh, Yep. So, uh, so this has been a lot of fun. It was, it was a challenge, uh, but, uh, but it was a fun challenge. It really yep, was. I agreed. So, yeah. Hmm. So, so thank you. Ken, Ken was the one who, who came up with this challenge and, you know, much as we may have cursed him at times <laughs> as we were trying to come up with these, and, damn it. Why wouldn't he let us have a singles? <laughs> we should post what we have been writing to each other privately so people that's right. can see that you yeah know, oh well maybe i overlooked it what do, you mean? <laughs> what do you mean i'll go, I'll go over it i don't know Oh, right. it's just great, and and thank you all for the for the comments too, and and uh, and we and we will read them after the show. Mm -hmm. I think so many of you have been writing your picks, and uh, and we will definitely read them, um, and and comment. We always do read the comments, and mm. uh, we love it, and we're so glad. A number of you have said how fun this has been, and right. and uh, so glad that that you're enjoying it. We enjoy it as much as you do. Right, and, and then uh, when this when the when this gets posted on YouTube, leave your comments too. Leave your four by fours on the on, on the in the comment section on when when this gets posted on youtube please do because we read those as well and so, be right back to you yeah. absolutely yeah yep, yep so uh you know we we love you know that's what this show is about is uh is interaction with you guys so uh so we mm. love that oh man so this is this has been so much fun um you know thank you so much everybody for for taking part in this this has been a blast so uh so i think we'll uh, go around and uh, let everybody know what we're up to um let me just uh start off by saying uh i have uh, a kind of an announcement that uh, coming this sunday february 28th my monthly show uh, is uh, coming back. Uh, I didn't get to do one last month because I was too busy getting ready for my Motown class, which went really mm -hmm. well. It was a lot of fun. Hope to do a class in the future. But my monthly show is back. It's on my Facebook page. And it's a special one this time because it'll also be on my birthday. Yeah. So, uh, so I'm going to be having a virtual birthday party uh, at 4 p.m. Eastern on uh sunday february 28th so it'll be the usual music discussion and and news and all kinds of fun stuff uh and uh, as john would say the us usual rubbish but it won't cost well yeah. say that and yeah. it won't cost anything right bring bring <laughs> gifts though bring coca-cola bring red lipstick bring yes. first yes. firstborn <laughs> children bring bring gifts nail polish uh, nail, nail yeah. polish <laughs> lip yeah exactly yeah bring all that stuff and uh bring some good, kids, some good shovel the driveway yeah, there yeah you can <laughs> shovel the driveway <laughs> that'd be really appreciated absolutely so it'll be a virtual virtual <laughs> birthday party so uh so again that's sunday february 28th 4 p.m on my facebook page so uh so come on and join me and also again i'll post all the information um march uh march 9th i'll be back at the uh virtual Tuesday record club uh, with Ken Womack, who will be joining us, by the way, for our next Talk More Talk. Um, and uh, yep, he'll be back for that. And uh, we're both going to be talking about the police's and Yada Mandata. So um, I'm really looking forward to that, even though Tom dissed the police today in his... In his... I did. <laughs> What's I your did. problem? In, I, in his... We were talking about deep cuts on the show, and I was just mentioning how, you know, I, in uh, right around the 99 2000 area, I was really getting getting away from greatest hits and starting to collect people, uh, my bands that I liked discography. And I was just mentioned how uh, one of the discographies that I didn't really care for the deep hits, but I loved the hits was the police. I'm really, I don't even like the hits. Yeah, I like oh, every, I, I love I love every yeah. breath you take. Right, I but they've got song. some they, they've got some great. They've got some the really good hits. <laughs> However, unfortunately, it was the, the the filler that I just couldn't get myself into. So I promised Kit that I'll go Ooh. back and, and revisit it since it has been 20 years or so since yep. I've uh, listened to their catalog. You can listen to them and you uh, can start like the beginning talk part. Right. <laughs> and I'm like, I start the song. And finally, it's like, don't stay. Like, oh, now the song's like, don't stay. I'm sorry. I'm trying to be funny, Good folks. night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> 
just a little contrast. But boy, yeah, wait, wait. the day that I I don't want to take up too much time. But boy, the day that I was I was driving, I was twenty one. I heard every breath you take for the first time. I said, I, after I'm done with work, I'm going to Sam Goody and I'm buying this forty five mm. day. Yeah, yep. I, I didn't know I'd be sick of it so much because they play it to death. Yeah, now, they played right? that to but, death. They did. But yeah. really, boy, yeah. I tell you, that was one of my favorite stories with a new song when I heard it. Mm-hmm. And thought, wow, I, I, I got to get this right away. It sounded mm-hmm. so, to me, so different from the form. I thought their song's a little formulaic. Mm-hmm. You know, I like yep. Roxanne. Yep. Well, oh. Zenyatta Mandata was a, was a great album, too. So, uh, so yep. So that will be uh, March 9th. And uh, I will post the links and how to sign up and everything. So that's, that's all my stuff. So uh, anyway, uh, Tom, how about you? What are, you're always up to stuff. With I, yeah, don't remind me. Um, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> last uh, this past Saturday, we posted our, our latest uh, episode, which we had a um, future author who's working on a, a great new book on called Little Wing, the Jimmy McCullough story. His name is Paul Sally, uh, just like Sally G. Uh, he talked about, uh, you know, making the book and we talked about Jimmy McCullough, you know, as a musician and, and throughout his career. Uh, great time. Good discussion with him. And look, he promised this book would be out later this year, so let's uh, let's cross our fingers uh, on, a, yeah. on a really good book about Jimmy McCullough. So um, awesome. one of the great uh, forgotten lead guitarists from the '70s, um, you know. So uh, that there's that. Uh, this coming Wednesday, ranking the tracks returns, and we are going to be ranking uh, this bad boy right here. Press to play, so that should be pretty exciting. I will be it's tuning in for that one. You have a get other guest on. Sorry, sorry. They can't all be number one. Okay. No, no, no. They can't (laughs) can't be number one. Ken and I will be there with bells on. Oh, but anyways, (laughs) but I really Andy and I really appreciate everybody. I mean, it's it's growing every week. It's it seems like this is getting bigger and bigger, and we really appreciate you all uh coming along with this ride for us because a lot of people are going back and re-listening to these albums that they haven't listened to in a while that's really what this is all about you know getting back into these songs and and going back and i mean are these songs really as bad as i thought they were originally or you know have they grown on me since so it's been a really great pleasure seeing everybody's rankings as well in their comments so keep them coming um i want to personally thank uh, my good friend ethan alexanian for all those thumbnails that he's been doing for us. And um, and he updated our, our, our logo, our Two Legs logo, and I really love it. And, um, you know, Ethan, my friend, uh, you, you know, since you've been doing these, these, you know, your fans on the run and been in this Beatles community, uh, you've been an asset. And um, I, hopefully you'll be, you know, doing these things for, for years to come. And um, you're, we're better because you're here with us. So thank you. And, um, you know, right thank on. you for everything that you do. Um, can't, w- can't wait to see what thumbnail picture he comes up with of you and Andy for press what to play. Not to do. Yep. <laughs> no, I've told him, you know, to not you superimpose our faces. Over. <laughs> <laughs> I could just see, you know, Andy Jerry. holding Tom. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'd love to see that. Uh, I would love yeah, to see that. Right. Pay money. You and everybody that. else. <laughs> you and everybody else. But, uh, um, but yeah, Andy and I really appreciate everything that he does for us. Um, and then next week, our, our latest episode that will be coming this Saturday uh, is about uh, so- songs that McCartney gave away that were singles. And did his weight, did, it, the, the, did his name carry the same weight with these singles as he did when he was a Beatle? You know, we all know the success that Lennon McCartney had. Uh, giving songs to other acts like you know Peter and Gordon, Billy J. Kramer, and Apple Jacks and whatever. So, but but did these songs do as well uh, during his solo years as they did when he was a Beatles? So we kind of you know you know talked about that. We had five songs that we talked about. You know how did they do? And that's the why I, I messaged mm. the other the other day about those two songs. Yeah. Um, and you know so. There's but, a huge uh, difference there, though, Tom. Yeah, no, there it, is. And that's what, one of the things that we talked yeah. about. You know, there is a big difference because of the fact that you have the Lennon factor as well. You have the Beatlemania factor as well. You know, but in the case of some of these other songs that Paul wrote later on, right. mm-hmm. there wasn't a big deal made about the fact that he no, wrote it. No, a lot of people didn't right. even know it. It's, that's so, uh, one of the things we mentioned. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hmm. So, but yeah, so we had an interesting chat about that. So that's coming up this Saturday. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. Very always good. always a loads of stuff planned. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, all right, Joe, how about you? You've you uh, have stuff planned. Uh, oh, a little bit planned. Uh, something different. Uh, for one thing, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Mean Mr. Mayo. Uh, and I have a new show that I'm doing, which you can be found on my channel. And we're trying to make it weekly. It's called Fab Gab. <sighs> Uh, and it's not uh, a certain time every week, you know, because we're trying to get our schedules together. I'm on there with fellow friends and YouTubers who have Beatle channels, uh, Matthew Street and Beatle Brad. Uh, and there's going to be other guests joining us, and I'm welcoming all of you at some point on there, nice. too, if you yeah. like. And uh, right now what we're doing is we're, we start started by ranking all the UK Beatles albums, the songs, from least favorite to most favorite. We did with the Beatles. Uh, I did Please Please Me by myself. Then I started with my friends. We did with the Beatles, and we did a Hard Day's Night. Forget it. I mean, forget it. Any Beatle album is near impossible, but mm. a Hard Day's Night especially was uh, yeah, quite it was a tough a one. Job, yeah, absolutely. You know, I didn't uh, envy the, you guys. <laughs> no, it was, I was telling you, it's it's insane to try to do that. But we're, we're, after we finish that, we're thinking chronologically. Uh, we're going to go all the way from, you know, the solo careers of, of the four of them all the way up to McCartney three or whatever comes out by the time we're done in a, two or three years, whatever <laughs> it'll, <nice>. be, <laughs> it'll be. And, uh, you know, other subjects, it's not just going to be ranking right now. We're, we're going to do the rankings, but, you know, other topics here and there, too. So that's Fab Gab. And as I say, the time always changes. But this time it's going to be uh, the next show, Sunday, February 28th. A special day, Kit. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought you were born on the 29th, Kit. I was. But of course, yeah, uh -huh. so you, don't get a real the, one this year. The 28th. <laughs> no. You have to do the 28th. Yeah. But it is at 2 p.m. Eastern okay. time. Okay. So you may still have a chance to catch after that. that maybe you can catch Kit. So I don't think it's going to be as long. So right no. after us, go to Kit. Mm -hmm. Yep, no problem. So we have your, your Sunday all planned out for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah so far you know what you're doing yep you know what, what you're, you're doing, doing because yep, we're going to be doing. doing beetles for sale next oh perfect well, well, that's what's that doing. you're doing you know yeah. <laughs> what's that you're doing? You, know, you know you know what you're doing <laughs> sunday oh man well oh, done ken well done you're well mm. done so mm. that sounds great okay ken yeah, how fun. about you you're always He's, he's 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 busier than I am. That's oh, right. That's impossible. Busy man, <laughs> Beetle biz. Here you go. No, Heart but uh, I just Beatle community. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just wanted to say, Joe, I watched the uh, the with the Beatles show, the Fab. Oh, band. you did. Yeah. Yeah. I always find Fun. it interesting when when all of you almost have the same choices at the bottom. Yeah. Of the right. <laughs> you have to notice. I don't know if you notice. I don't want to spoil, but you know, Beetle Brad's number one was incredible on it. I couldn't believe what he picked for number one. I'm glad he picked it. It was a cover song, which I picked the cover, actually. Both of us okay. picked wow. the cover song. Don't so say we're what not going to give but... it away. Yeah, don't give it away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> don't give it away. Okay. Um, as some of you know, I have a new YouTube channel. And despite having some problems a few weeks ago that everybody here knows about <laughs> and uploading the interview with Al Sussman, which took two weeks to get on the channel. Um, I didn't want to proceed with more interviews until that was resolved. But um, I have now done three interviews with Gary Van Syok, the wow. former bass player of Elephant's Memory. Two of the three are now on the YouTube channel. And the third one, hopefully, will be up tonight right after this show. And it really is, between all three interviews, everything you could possibly think of to ask Gary Van Syok about his time with John and Yoko, talking nice. about how Elephant's Memory was formed, how they worked with John and Yoko, the Sometime in New York City album, Approximately Infinite Universe with Yoko, mm -hmm. the uh, one and only mm -hmm. Elephant's Memory album on Apple, Apple, all the TV appearances that they made, Dick Cavett wow. and Mike Douglas, and I've been watching the Mike Douglas show the last few weeks. Wow, I love it more <laughs> now than I ever have. Very intense week when they co-hosted that show. Um, there's that, there's the one-to-one -one concerts. We talked about all that between all three of those interviews. So, you know, he's just a great, a great guest to have on and I've known him since the eighties and, uh, yeah, Gary Van Syok on my YouTube channel, which is Ken Michaels radio on my website, kenmichaelsradio.com. 
As you know, every week I have Beatles trivia where you can win one of 10 prizes, including Kit's book, Songs You Were Singing. And since I have Gary Van Sack on the YouTube channel, do I have it here? Probably not. <laughs> can I find it? No, nope, I thought not. I had it here. <laughs> but no, no, no. Okay, Gary released a CD back in 2014 called Pop Goes the Elephant. Oh, and yeah. um, it's a compilation of a lot of songs through the decades that he recorded with a strong R&B feel to it. And um, I'm giving away next week as a prize on my website. If you win, if you're the winner for that week um, and you want that CD, I'll throw that in as a bonus as well ah, um, hmm. Gary Van Sayak CD I thought I had it here what did I do with it oh man <laughs> all right um so yeah uh there's that things we said today uh last week we did a show with David Bedford as our guest he is the author he's released a lot of great books but his uh, latest one is the country of Liverpool it explores country music in the town of Liverpool what a presence that had and an influence on music there and how it affected the Beatles. So we did a show with, Dead, uh, with David, which uh, was last week. You can find that on our YouTube channel, also on iTunes and Podbean. And I'll be interviewing David Wednesday for my YouTube channel as well. Plenty of David Bedford to go around. So, um, and next week, things we said today is another idea kind of like what we just did tonight. Um, I thought it would be a cool idea to put together a dream Beatles BBC compilation. Ooh. If it was the 1960s and let's just say EMI Parlophone decided, you know what? We should put out a BBC compilation. And you had 14 tracks on the mm -hmm. album, like most Beatles albums. What songs would you pick? Wow. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Now, are you taking and, from like both BBC volumes one and two? Or, I mean, how, how are you? Uh, are they going to be our uh, uh, originals allowed to? Because I, I like, I'm interested in the, the cover songs, you know. Well, yeah. That. The Beatles did 36 songs for BBC Radio that they didn't release for EMI. Okay. And 35 of those were covers. Yeah. And the only original that they did um, that they didn't release was I'll Be On My Way. Which happens so, to be my favorite. I'm so glad we got a recording of that somewhere along the line. Yeah. I, I love that. So um, really and truly, it makes the most sense that these songs that you pick should be of those 36. Yeah. Uh, why bother putting right. another version on there of a song that they already right. put out? Right, right. Yeah. That's what I mean. So um, if you could pick 14, if you can put together your list, you know, not realizing in the 90s there was going to be a live at the BBC. Fair Just enough. knowing what okay. did exist, if you could pick mm -hmm. 14 of what you think was the best of those 36 songs, what would you pick? Mm -hmm. So we're going to do that next week. We're going to record that on Monday. Should be out next Wednesday. Next week. Good. Cool. Very nice. Oh, that should so, be a fun show. Yeah, that so great. all that's going on. So mm -hmm. if you can, subscribe to my YouTube channel, Ken Michaels Radio, and uh, check out things we said today as well. And oh, by the way, my... that, that nice top shelf there behind you. That's a very <laughs> wonderful top shelf you got there. <laughs> oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm finding that everybody's rooms look exactly the same in all these podcast <laughs> shows. It really is the same backdrop, I think. Yeah, right. yeah. Oh, we all have funny. the same collections, but mine... <laughs> has that tote bag oh yeah no. wow wherever did you get that i have no idea <laughs> i'm gonna start hanging mine on ringo's hand over there that's that policeman oh, yeah. that. that's where that would look great if i could find it i know i have it back there somewhere yep there you go <laughs> perfect and one more thing my syndicated show every little thing there's a new episode this week for george harrison for his birthday it's a one-hour special George Beatles, Solo, Wilburys, Side Projects, Cool Stuff from Splinter, Jackie Lomax, um, ELO as well, oh, all in that oh, show. Nice. So go to my website, KenMichaelsRadio.com. Look for the Every Little Thing page. It lists all the radio stations that run the show and when they run it with links to their website so you can stream them. And by the way, the trivia question for this week is a George Harrison question for his Excellent. birthday. So, Very good. Of course. Yeah. 
Awesome. Wouldn't expect uh, anything else. That's <laughs> right. Oh my gosh. That, well, that's great. And uh, of course, don't forget, we are on Twitter um, at Talk More Talk One. That's number one. Uh, we have a website, talkmoretalk.com. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to us on YouTube. We are almost at a thousand subscribers. Yes, and congratulations almost- to Ken Michaels and the, the gang at Things We Said for today yes. for reaching uh, 1,000 subs. Yay! Oh, that's oh, awesome. Cool. Yep, I said, Mama, great. you got to subscribe to this. <laughs> yeah. uh, this, has, this holds the record. Yep, the there most. you go. So there you go. References. Oh, yep, I think so. I think hope so. Gary Wilbur's watching. Yep, exactly. So, uh, so yeah, so, you know, we're almost there. We can taste it. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so please uh, subscribe. Tell tell your friends. Tell everybody you know. Uh, please subscribe. And, of course, you can find us on any um, podcasting platform you can think of. Um, and uh, you can also email us at talkmoresolotalk at gmail.com. Uh, if you have ideas for topics you'd like to see, uh, please let us know. Uh, we've gotten some great ideas uh, and we've we've used some of them in the past. So we, we'd love to hear from you. And we also want to give um, a shout out to Beetle Ed over at fab4radio.com, yep. uh, which runs this show and runs many of our shows, our, our separate shows. So thank you, thank you. Uh, to him we really appreciate it and we appreciate all of you for tuning in and uh, keeping in touch with us sending us tips news tips all that stuff we, oh, we yeah. can't th- can't thank you enough we mm. really appreciate your your support we can't do this without you so uh for mm. joe mayo tom hanyati ken michaels this is kiddo tools saying stay healthy stay warm and as Ringo says, peace and love. <laughs> peace See you next love. time. Bye-bye. <laughs>